DNA has the power to protect your family, exonerate the wrongfully accused, and convict the guilty. All this was full of blood. This was their case. Jessica Reyes had just celebrated her 15th birthday in 2004 when a man tried to rape her. There were a lot of times where I thought I was going to die when he was doing that, because I was like, I'm going to die. I was like, I'm going to die today, I'm going to die, but then I just kept fighting him back, fighting him back. Curtis Tucker, the man responsible for the attack, left his blood at the scene, but there was no way to link that blood to him. His identity remained unknown, and he was convicted of other minor crimes. Unfortunately, New York State did not require, and still doesn't mandate, that all convicted criminals give a DNA sample. So Tucker was not revealed as Jessica's attacker. Years went by. Only when he was convicted of breaking into the home of a 74-year-old man in 2010 was his DNA finally taken and the attempted rape of Jessica solved. During those six long years, Jessica lived in fear. I don't have to say anything. DNA said it for me. DNA is collected from a mouth swab or a crime scene and entered into New York's data bank, where criminals are matched to crimes like Jessica's. He went into the database and three days later we, we got our match. The trouble is, New York takes DNA samples from less than half of all convicted criminals. Our current laws only permit us to collect DNA in roughly half the cases where criminal convictions have occurred. That is as if a doctor had the ability to only use a life-saving medicine in half the cases that presented to him or herself. That doesn't make sense in medicine. It doesn't make sense in law enforcement. DNA has the power to exonerate the innocent. It's finally over with, you know, I'm overwhelmed. It's probably one of the happiest days of my life. DNA testing wasn't available when Stephen Barnes was convicted in 1989. But his conviction for raping and murdering Kimberly Simon was vacated through DNA when it linked another man to the crime. After Barnes had spent nearly 20 years in prison. If we had had DNA testing back when Stephen's case was being investigated, he would have never been arrested, let alone convicted. Um, it, it just has changed everything. Brian Berry and Terrence Batiste were threatened with the death penalty for a double murder they didn't commit. DNA cleared both men two days before trial and implicated another man, Michael Mosley, who was ultimately convicted of the crimes. The amount of resources that were put into this is staggering and all chasing the wrong folks. Now, it, it was all valid, good police work, but it was all for naught. And had the DNA been there in 2002, none of that time would have been wasted. I was glad that, you know, this chapter was finally coming to an end. But at the same time, I knew that a, a grave misjustice has been dealt to me. And the stress, the emotional drain, I mean, these are things that are always going to stay embedded, regardless, as time goes on, they're always going to be there. It's going to be a scar. It's going to be a constant reminder. DNA doesn't lie, people do. It is additional information in, which is used in some of the biggest decisions that a person can make. A judge in sentencing, a prosecutor in prosecuting, a jury in convicting or acquitting. These are monumental decisions. It's got to be more widely available. Since New York's data bank became operational in 1996, it's helped identify the perpetrators in more than 10,000 crimes. DNA matches in over 3,500 sexual assaults and nearly 900 murders. So many of our clients come from communities where they're very distrustful of anything that's collected on them, something collected that's of their body, whether it's body fluids, whether it's fingerprints, whether it's whatever. And getting them to see how important it is in the larger case Historically, it's been kind of hard. And why are they trusting it? Because they understand that it, there's no discrimination, that this is hard science, and that it has helped crime victims get a sense of justice. Over 2,000 crimes would have been solved an average of five years earlier if the state required a DNA sample after all criminal convictions. Raymond McGill proves why New York ought to require DNA samples from all convicted criminals. 
He was a serial killer, but no one knew it. He'd been convicted of minor crimes, but wasn't required to give a DNA sample. If DNA had been collected, he wouldn't have been free to kill twice after raping an 85-year-old Albany woman in 2000. Had we gotten that back in 1999, the, the rape of the 85-year-old woman, as heinous as it is, would have still happened. But we would have been able to match up the DNA with the DNA, DNA we recovered at the crime scene very quickly wouldn't have helped that victim, but what it would have done is it would have saved the lives of our, of our two future victims. Criminals don't specialize and their crimes can escalate. McGill is one such case. His prior uh, convictions were uh, for drug possession in this, in this county and for a, a, a probation on a pettit larceny uh, in Albany County. So you would look at Ramon McGill and you would say, well, there's uh, somebody who has problems, but you would not recognize him for the serial killer that he was. So it really illustrates the point that today's pettit larceny person, today's shoplifter, today's uh, drug user could be tomorrow's rapist or murderer, or in this case, uh, today's drug user was yesterday's murderer. Some people think it's not important to take a DNA sample for minor crimes, petty larceny for one. But the truth is, when the DNA databank was expanded in 2006 to include petty larceny, those offenders were linked to 49 murders, 221 sexual assaults, 114 robberies, and 399 burglaries. I can tell you that when we fought uh, at the state level to get petty larceny, included as a DNA-taking uh, offense. Uh, the number of crimes that were solved were in the dozens. And we're not talking about, we didn't solve other petty larcenies. We solved homicides, we solved rapes, we solved burglaries. Taking a DNA sample is not an invasion of privacy. And if you're not raping somebody, you're not killing somebody, it's no problem. But what we test for in DNA does not reveal anything about you other than whether you're a man or a woman. It does not, for example, tell you whether you're going to have a, a predisposition to breast cancer or sickle cell anemia or Parkinson's disease. There are genetic tests that can, can do that. They're done in hospital settings. They're not done in a data bank. DNA testing has advanced. Even small samples can be tested. DNA in a wad of gum helped solve the murder of Cosimo de Brizzi and the injury of his son Nicholas in their Newburgh home in 2004. While they struggled with the intruder, the intruder fired a number of shots, both hitting both Nicholas as well as Cosimo de Brizzi. In the struggle, a piece of gum was knocked out of the mouth of the intruder, which landed on the staircase where this all was taking place. But despite having DNA from the gum, it couldn't be linked to a perpetrator, so the case went cold. Killer Dennis Sweeney committed other crimes over the next three years, before a grand larceny in 2006 that was DNA eligible linked him to the gum. If we didn't have that gum, uh, we would have never caught Mr. Sweeney. New York State continues to debate the need to expand the DNA data bank, while tens of thousands of crime victims await justice. The wrongfully accused sit in prison, and the guilty roam free to commit more crimes. How long do we have to keep crawling on our hands and knees? New York used to be the leader in criminal justice issues. Why is New York lagging behind? I think it's just a matter of time before we realize that we need to have safer streets, and this is one way we can do that. There's already proven nexus between many of these minor crimes and, and the movement over to major crimes. It's, it's how we can get ahead of our criminals. It's, tech, it's the advance in technology. We have to leverage that to be able to protect our citizens. Taking DNA from more convicted offenders means more cases solved. The idea that somebody can be convicted, and I want to stress it's conviction. You're convicted of a crime in New York State, it'll cost $30 for that Q-tip that they put in your mouth to be analyzed, and that can solve any number of crimes, and it just doesn't happen. It's, it's a shame. It's actually tragic that we're, we're allowing people out to commit more crimes when we could have put a stop to it. Right now, DNA holds the key to solving nearly 40,000 crimes. 
What if you were the victim or someone you love were waiting for justice? Science doesn't lie. So they can say I lied, but science doesn't. And that's the truth.